The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. So regarding the Quraysh, they gave an offer, as you've mentioned, to the Holy Prophet. Did they go to Abu Talib and give this offer? They, they according to this uh, narration, which is in Bihar, volume 18, page 182, mm -hmm. um, they went to Abu Talib, yes. Okay, so they went to Abu <coughs> Talib, salam, and they told him, we'll give him all the money, make him richer than us, we'll give him uh, jurisdiction, we'll give him the authority, we'll be here under his domain. Subject to him stopping so we can carry on with our businesses, we can have all the trade coming in and everything that was attributed with idol worship. And obviously, we, we wouldn't expect a positive answer, obviously. Abu Talib would have taken the message to uh, uh, Holy Prophet وسلم, and obviously he rejected. Mm. What happened next? Um, he said, um, um, you know, they should give me one word, make a statement if you like. Yeah. Um, they would be the kings of the Arabs. And, um, and they, even the non-Arabs will come under their domain. And they will be kings in paradise as well. So Abu Talib conveyed that. He said, and they said, oh, that's very, that sounds very good. You know, it's better than we expected. Kings in paradise as well. We'll give them not one statement, we'll give them ten statements. We'll give him ten statements. What do you want us to say? To say? He said, That uh, you testify that there is no, no God but Allah and that I am his messenger. I am the messenger of Allah. And they said, you want us to leave 360 gods and obey one god? Um, so they refused. Uh, they refused to give that one statement. Mm. Um, so they broke up. And of course, um, they realized that he, they are being undermined. More and more people are going to him. And um, they... Um, said the thoughts that they want to, they should undermine him, ridicule him and so on, to the extent, they should at all costs, no matter what, we need to stop him. And of course, it's well known that they started asking for miracles. Proofs. Proofs. Okay. Uh, miracles that prove that, okay, to, to prove to us that you are okay. um, a messenger of Allah. You are... Um, supported by the divine, if you like. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in this khutbah, Sermon 192 of Nasjid al balagh Imam Ali uh, reports that, again, um, when the revelation was made, it says, وَلَقَدْ سَمِعْتُ رَنَّةَ الشَّيْطَانِ I heard, حِينَ نَزَلَ الْوَحِي Alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa I heard the the moan of shaitan when wahi was first revealed on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And I said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, what is that moan? He said, Hada shaitan qad ayasa min ibadatah. This is um, uh, the shaitan. He has uh, lost all hope. Mm of being worshipped, basically saying that Shaitan was planning um, 
to come up with all these various religions and so on, so that it would fall in the category of mankind for worshipping the shaitan instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now that this wahi has started, this revelation has started, the revelation of Islam, this really shattered, destroyed all his plans. Okay. Did because it shatter it or delay it? Because we do have devil worship today. We do, but not the way that he wanted it. Oh, he if wanted it. Wasn't, okay. If it wasn't for the Prophet <coughs> sallallahu It would have been totalitarian. Absolutely. Okay. There would be no okay. remnants of right, uh, and it was it would be complete falsehood. Provident. Uh, uh, and so, a holy prevailing Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is what keeps the truth on the yes, surface. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Um, not, not only that he established the truth, um, and Alhamdulillah, the religion of Islam, if you like, is the only religion which has um, um, its teachings there solidly. Um, the teachings of Islam, the Quran, the holy book of Islam, and the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, and uh, Ahlul Bayt, his uh, his uh, twelve successes, if you like are there <coughs> without being distorted um, and the fact that they are available to mankind today the undistorted Quran and the undistorted teachings of Ali Bayt uh, apart from that it's miracle basically they feed and they strengthen right uh, uh, as opposed to falsehood they strengthen the haq they, streng they strengthen the truth and for all people to see and all people can access this is something extremely important. Whereas this is not the case for, if you like, other religions because um, they're, they're, they've been distorted <coughs> in one way or another. Um, I would like to continue this because the point of, we were talking about the miracles and proofs. So the shaitan was moaning, he was rather displeased, he was very annoyed. The fact that this new wahi started upon the Prophet ﷺ, and he knew that with this wahi, uh, all his plans are in, uh, in tatters, they've been destroyed. Um, as you said, you may be here and there, but it's nothing uh, prominent hmm. as he would have liked it to be. Then the Prophet says to Imam Ali alayhi salam, إِنَّكَ تَسْمَعُ مَا أَسْمَعُ وَتَرَى مَا أَرَى إِلَّا أَنَّكَ لَسْتَ نَبِي you, you hear what I hear. This is quite important. We, we should link it to the earlier on we talked about in the last episode that Imam, the Prophet appointed Imam Ali as his uh, Khalifa, his successor, right from the word go, when he was talking to Bani Hashim, inviting them to Islam. So, إِنَّكَ تَسْمَعُ مَا أَسْمَعُ وَتَرَى مَا أَرَى you hear what I hear, and you see what I see, except that you are not a prophet. But you are vicegerent, you are, if you like, my appointed successor, and you are on the right path. <coughs> so that is some, something important. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam continues. He says, I was with him, peace be upon him and his family, when um, some people from Quraysh came to him, and they asked him, um, you, have, you have made a huge, you have made a big claim. A claim that your fathers and forefathers have not. Okay? And uh, that... Um, <coughs> and we want to see if, we we're going to ask you something. If you can do it, then we know that you are a messenger of God. You are a messenger of Allah. And if you can't do it, then we, it will be proof, as far as we are concerned, that you are a, a magician, a sorcerer, and a liar. And the Prophet wasallam said, okay, what do you want? He said, we ask you to, and they were pointing to a tree mm. at the distance, um, that that tree uh, is uprooted along with its roots and so on. It comes and stands before you here. <laughs> So they were seeking for supernatural incidents supernatural. to feed their... Um and the Prophet ﷺ said to them, Allah is able to do everything. And if Allah did that for you, 
Will you believe in Allah and in me? And they said, yes. He said, I'll, I'll do what, whatever you ask. Mm -hmm. I'll show you whatever you ask. But I know that you wouldn't believe in me. Um, and then Allah said to, I'm sorry, the Prophet sallallahu addressed the tree. He uh, faced the tree and addressed her, the tree and said, if you believe in Allah and the day of judgment and believe that I am the messenger of Allah, uh, so I want you to be uprooted and come and stand here before me. And Imam Ali alayhi salam then considers by the um, by he who sent the Prophet sallallahu as a messenger, the tree became uprooted. Subhanallah. And it moved, and it and it had um, uh, a loud humming sound. Um, uh, and the, the 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 leaves and the uh, they were flapping and they came and stood before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Subhanallah. Did the tree speak? <laughs> did he say? Did the tree speak or just just came closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? In here in this ver in this uh, sermon it doesn't say that uh, okay. the tree spoke. And he says, I, um, when they saw that, obviously they were very shocked. Mm. Um, so they wanted more, if you like. They asked um, out of their arrogance uh, and, and pride, mm. they said, ask half of the tree to move back to where it was. SubhanAllah. They, they're not satisfied, they just want more. As if, as if a single tree getting out of its location and moving is an everyday. Yeah. yeah. So, SubhanAllah. the Prophet asked, uh, asked the tree to do that, and half of the tree moved back, whereas the other half stayed there. Stayed there. SubhanAllah. And yet again, they denied. Um, and then, that wasn't enough. They said, okay, ask the other half. To, to go, go back and join and fuse back the way it used mm. to be. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi asked for the tree, to, for the other half of the tree mm. to go back and fuse to the, to the first half. Subhanallah. And then uh, Imam Ali says that I said, not subhanallah, but he said, la ilaha illallah. I said, there is no God but Allah. I am the, the first one to believe in you, O Messenger of Allah. And and that the, the tree did what it did by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prove and to testify to your prophethood. But despite that, the qawm, the people from Quraysh said, no, he's a liar and he's a magician. That's something which the Prophet Allah 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 has said that you would not believe. Unfortunately, there was... Um, uh, and they said to him, oh, all, the only people who believe in you are like, like that boy. And yeah. Imam Ali says, th they meant me. Um, this stubbornness, unfortunately, continued for a long time, um, despite all the feel like, supernatural events and miracles that they asked the Prophet um, to do. Uh, and but the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, continued to uh, uh, invite people to Islam. So um, would he go on a daily basis to the Kaaba? the Holy Kaaba, and preach there? W would he organize majalis, meetings, gatherings? Yes, uh, probably not every day to the Kaaba, mm -hmm. but certainly um, he, he, he would organize, if you like, majalis, meetings, um, um, in, you know, houses of those followers who are following the Prophet mm -hmm. So he, he continued to do that to gain more and more supporters. But the thing is, they become they became more um, the Quraysh became more vocal, and they started harassing and punishing hmm. uh, the um, the followers of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who were more keen in coming towards the religion in the beginning? Who were more open to Islam? Um, various people, uh, basically, whoever th those who at least who came <coughs> were, if you like, who they could ponder. And think for themselves. Because hmm. what, have, sorry, uh, what, what I want to say is, um, I, 
I remember reading that in the beginning, the poor and the young were more open to Islam than obviously the rich and the elderly. Yeah, um, that could be yeah, the poor and the young. In fact, the slaves, um, they um, started thinking about this. If you like the rich, yes, they had a lot of vested interests. They didn't want to lose their position, uh, even though the Prophet said to them that um, it's not a matter of losing your position. You could still be the head of Quraysh hmm. and be a Muslim. Yeah. Which, of course, eventually that's how it works out. Worked out when mm -hmm. it was the conquest of Mecca, which ten years later yes. um, um, took place. Mm -hmm. um, the chiefs of Quraysh, if you like, they tended to be Muslims. Uh, they accepted Islam, if you like. Yes. Uh, and they remained chiefs. Like Abu Sufyan and the likes. Yeah, and the likes. Not they remained Allah. chiefs. They made, uh, um, and uh, and if you like, became Muslims. And they didn't lose any of their um, uh, status or wealth or whatever. And and uh, the Prophet will come into that, but the Prophet yeah. was, was, was uh, helping them. So yes, to begin with, it was the people who were thinking. In fact, um, one of the things which... Uh, one of the people who who, if you like, became Muslim and uh, is uh, Bilal, Bilal al-Habashi. He was an African slave of Quraysh, of one of the masters of Quraysh. And he uh, became Muslim. And, uh, of course, that angered Quraysh. And furthermore, he refused to take orders um, from their masters and this was a sign of things to come that you know this this Muhammad he's he's causing causing uh, social tension if you like mm, changing the nidam the system the system um, and of course um, something which they didn't like so if you like slaves did that mm, people who weren't slaves but if you like young hmm. or they weren't so young but anyway young Abu Dhar for example he um, he embraced uh, Islam. Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. During the first, you know, those three years in private. Uh, and we have reports that um, he, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said to him, You should go back to your tribe, Ghaffar, your tribe, and convey um, uh, the message of Islam to them so that they become Muslim, they embrace uh, hmm. Islam. Um, and he said, to the Prophet, but I can't. I really want to sort of uh, make this declaration openly in the mosque. So he went to the mosque, and at the top of his voice, he said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammadur Rasulullah." I testify there is no God but Allah. Mosque meaning Muhammad. the Kaaba, the oh. Masjid al Haram. Yes, Kaaba. Um, yes. Uh, yes, of course. At that time, there was only that, that was the only mosque uh, masjid uh, there. I testify there is no, no God but Allah and Muhammad is a, is a messenger of Allah. And this was something, uh, if you like, a red line as far as Quraysh was concerned. So <laughs> a lot of people, sort of, at least some of the people who were there from Quraysh, they um, um, gathered around him and attacked him and um, beating him to the, with the intention of killing him. But uh, it said that Al-Abbas or another person, Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, he said he, in order to discourage them from doing this, uh, you know, continue with the beating of uh, Abu Dhar, um, he said to them, you know, you do business with Ghaffar, and um, you have links with Ghaffar. If you kill this man, he is one of the Ghaffar, then we'll lose money, basically. You, you, it will be to the to your detriment, to your, not in your interest. Mm. So they stopped. At least they were, they, um, they were convinced to stop. So they let him go. He came back another day. Hmm. And uh, by the way, when, when he said, I want to make this declaration, the Prophet ﷺ said, they will beat you and kill you to the extent that they will kill you. They have no hesitance to killing you. So you shouldn't do that. But he did it. And um, Shia of Ali. <laughs> and then Stubborn. a second time. He, wa he went a second time. And he did that. And they started beating him. And um, again, either Abbas or someone else, he warned them, about Ghaffar, the tribe of Ghaffar, the tribe of um, uh, Abu Dhar, uh, his name, whose name is Jundub, but he's known as Abu Dhar. And um, so they, he managed to uh, persuade them to stop, which they did. The Prophet said to him, 
you should go back to your tribe and await when you hear the news, when I, I say for you to come back. Mm. And I want you to go and convince your tribe so that they become Muslim. Basically, the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't want confrontation from uh, with Quraysh. He wanted um, to try... Run it smoothly to, as much as possible. Yeah, to run it smoothly, but uh, create as large a base as possible. Okay, okay. He wanted Build the foundation. More, that's right. He wanted more and more people... Uh, to embrace Islam. To embrace Islam. Okay. And um, this was his strategy throughout. Um, so, if you like, non-violence, in even um, pacifism, accepting uh, uh, violence and absorbing it and not responding likewise, he wanted to convey the message to the people because he knew that this message is inert with the with the uh, natural uh, uh, the nature of the human being, and it will they will accept it, and we, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be hardship. Um, it is narrated that, for example, when as he was <coughs> passing through mm, one day, people started hurling stone uh, in in Mecca at him. And um, one of the companions, of course, he started bleeding all over his face um, um, because they were hitting him with sto hurling stones at him. Um, uh, basically, they showered him with stones. No, no, no. And, and then one of the companions said, why don't you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish them, mm -hmm. curse them? Um, he said, the Prophet said, I haven't been sent as a, a cursor for these people. I haven't been sent as a mercy. So he said, he started wiping out um, the, the blood from his face and he said, Allahumma uh, uh, O God, forgive my people for they don't know. They don't know any better. So um, he certainly didn't respond likewise. He continued with his message of non-violence, if you like, and uh, he absorbed all the violence that uh, they, they showed him. And uh, he wanted to convey his message to the people, um, uh, which he do he did during these hard times, and also he did the same way when he migrated. Inshallah, we we'll talk about it when he migrated to Medina, and if like he became the head of state, um, he was the ruler, and people obeyed him. He had thousands under his command, and despite, even at that time, um, he continued the same manner. Um, uh, if there were any battles that he engaged, it was purely in self-defense. He never, ever initiated any battle, any fighting. Um, this was his policy. Um, but coming back home, in in they stayed. The, the Prophet sallallahu stayed in um, Mecca uh, during the first ten years. They suffered a lot of hardship, a lot of persecution. But uh, uh, he continued with his policy of trying to. Uh, convey the message of Islam to the people, give them time to think about it, and hopefully gradually uh, to embrace Islam. Which, of course, this is what happened. Um, it didn't happen at the pace uh, in Mecca as it did in Medina. In Medina, um, because they could see more and more teachings of the, of the Prophet ﷺ, they became, people became more interested and they embraced Islam mm. in huge numbers. I will go into that in detail, inshallah. But in, uh, when, it come, when it was in Medina, in, sorry, in Mecca, uh, the numbers were far, far less because uh, the enemy, if you like, Quraysh, was more powerful. They were proactively, not only they were spreading propaganda against the Prophet sallallahu but they were proactively stopping people from embracing and punishing mm -hmm. people from embracing. Islam. Boycotting, basically. The, the terminology were quite Boycott, famous today. Bo boycotting the Muslims. Yes, but I'm talking about they were actually proactively stopping people from embracing Islam or thinking about it. Okay, so they would torture uh, them, try to scare them, yeah, threatening them. people okay. from, you know, uh, going towards Islam. Mm. Um, so because of that, the number of people embracing Islam was far less compared to Medina. It is well known that while in the valley, in Shab Abu Talib, in the valley of Abu Talib, uh, they spent very long time there. At night, Abu, Abu Talib was concerned that he, the Prophet may be uh, harmed or even killed uh, by assassins um, during the night when he sleep. So he used to 
keep vigil, Abu Talib, and he used to get his sons to sleep in the place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.